Aber bevor wir jetzt äh, schnuppern und zwar in Rennsport, möchte ich mir mal ganz kurz äh, das Video angucken, wo jemand sein 20.000 Euro Rick vorstellt. Weil mich würde wirklich brennend mal interessieren, was da so dran ist. Ich bin ja immer bei solchen Zahlen, äh, werde ich ja immer ein bisschen gecatcht. Gucken wir mal rein hier. Was, was kriegen wir für 20.000? Jetzt bin ich mal gespannt. Das Coole ist, ich da, äh, das ist der nette Herr, der, der, das, äh, der dieses unfassbar geile Rick hat, wo man alles verschieben kann. Aus Kanada. Reactest du auf dein eigenes Video? Ich müsste irgendwann mal auch wieder eins machen, ja. Okay. Oh, ich bin neidisch auf dein Lenkrad. Ich finde dieses Grid-Lenkrad finde ich so unfassbar toll. Mm, das finde ich sehr schön. Ich hätte jetzt gedacht, für 20k ist noch äh, Motion drin, aber ist kein, ist kein Motion drin. Aber sowas finde ich richtig schön. Also, dass da so Autos drin das ist richtig schick. Oh, für eine Backplate. Welcome back to the channel and I'm excited to give you a tour of my updated sim racing setup. Oh, die Kabel sind schön. If you're already a subscriber, you may be familiar with my previous setup. Yep. And if you're new to the channel, now is the perfect time to subscribe. If you're a sim racing fan, you know how important it is to have the right equipment to maximize your experience. In this video, I'll show you the components I've selected to build my dream racing setup and <laughs> Is this a lüfter or a camera? It's a bit like a lüfter, but it's probably a camera, right? Explain why I chose them. Okay. A good cockpit or chassis provides a stable platform on which to mount your wheel, pedals, and other accessories. I've chosen the brand new ASR Pro chassis from Advanced Sim Racing. Oh, darauf bin ich so neidisch, ne? Das ist so ein tolles Rig, weil man diese ganzen Sachen am Lenkrad alle einstellen kann. Ich finde das so unendlich toll. Aber es gibt leider nur Shipment in USA und Kanada. Oh, das finde ich so geil. For its adjustability, ease of use and zero flex experience. This cockpit features a range of adjustable components including unique quick adjusting oh. wheel mount, allowing me to find the perfect setup regardless of what wheel I'm using. The ASR Pro introduces a new striking flat face aluminum profile design that offers excellent stability using the highest possible grade and thickness of aluminum provided in the sim racing industry to date. This frame allows me to adjust everything oh, to my so preferred good. seating position while allowing quick adjustments to steering height and distance when swapping wheels of different sizes. The cockpit is super solid and is future proof to accommodate even a D-Box motion and haptic setup, hopefully one day. After spending more time on this rig, I'll release a detailed review and discuss my experience building with this unique new chassis. A good wheelbase is essential for a realistic racing experience. I've chosen the popular SimiCube 2 Pro with 25 Nm of peak torque for deep immersion, advanced features, excellent build quality and overall better compatibility with third party wheels. I've been a fanatic DD1 user since I started sim racing. I've been long curious about what SimiCube offers and the ability to try different wheels on the market more efficiently by utilizing the SimiCube quick release system. So far, I've been very impressed and found the driving experience an improvement from the DD1. Muss ich mir überlegen. Weil es ist derselbe Preis übrigens, ne? Also, um das jetzt kurz nochmal aufzugreifen, er sagt halt, dass es eine bessere Experience ist als die DD1. Und die DD1 ist genau derselbe Preis. Also ich weiß nicht, wie jetzt der aktuelle Kurs ist. Äh, damals, als das bei mir war, war die DD1 genauso teuer wie die Sumo Cube 2 Pro. So I'll be comparing the Fnatic DD1 and discussing my experiences using both and why I ultimately chose to switch to SimiCube in a future video. Oh ja, Changing to the SimiCube wheelbase allowed me to try out some different wheels. First up is the brand new MPX wheel from Grid Engineering. That's so geil. This comes at a more reasonable price point for a high-end wheel from the team that brought us the gorgeous and jewel-worthy Porsche RSR replica wheel. Mm. I was excited when this was first announced and quickly placed my pre-order. So far, I've been very impressed and it has quickly become my daily driver. It features a full billet. Das ist übrigens eins der tollsten Feature dieses Lenkrad. Das ist hat noch hinten Knöpfe dran. <coughs> that anodized aluminum construction, adjustable paddles and clutches, comfortable polyurethane grips, 
87 controllable RGB LEDs, two seven-way switches, eight buttons, nine rotary encoders, and two rear auto buttons, which are found in real-life race good. cars. It's a lot of wheel for the price, and after further testing, I'll review this in more detail and release a video in the coming weeks. My second wheel combines the Sim Racing Bay's BB Ultra wheel plate and Turn Racing's R320 wheel rim. This makes oh, sie haben ein neues gemacht. Also das uh, Turn 20. Das habe ich ja auch noch uh, da hinten im Fenster liegen. Nee, stimmt nicht, im Regal. For a great das wheel wirklich to schönes various wheel. Vehicles, either GT or open wheel. Das Problem ist, bei dem Wheel habe ich festgestellt, du kannst leider nicht mehr so viel Force Feedback fahren, weil dein Daumen immer oben über diese Kanten hier rüber rutscht. Also ich sag mal, für hohe Torque, also für hohen Torque ist das ein bisschen schwierig, außer du hast einen richtig festen Griff. The BB Ultra is a solid plate with great tactile feeling for the paddle shifters and buttons and it costs oh, lesser wireless. than the similar Asher wheel plates. The turn racing rim is one of my favorites. It's highly durable and comfortable to use and is compatible with a large selection of wheel plates. The third wheel combo I've chosen is Turn Racing's BB2 button plate paired with a traditional leather wrap GT style rim from Advanced Sim Racing. This makes for a great all-around wheel suitable for road or GT style vehicles. The Turn Racing button plate offers plenty of functionality at a great price and the ASR leather wheel is a simple well-made rim that's comfortable to drive with and I enjoy this combo's minimal understated look and functionality and its approachable wheel for guests to use when trying out my rig for the first time thanks to its traditional shape. I have always considered pedals a crucial mm. part of my setup and I've had the opportunity to try out a few different sets. I've recently settled on Asatec SimSports Invicta pedals featuring a firm two-stage hydraulic brake that adds extra realism to my racing experience. I love the feel and overall design of these pedals and the orange adjustment knobs made finding my preferred setup an easy task to make on the fly. I recently reviewed these pedals on the channel and made some initial observations. Overall, my experience has been primarily positive. Every frame counts when it comes to sim racing, so I use triple MSI Gaming 32-inch 1440p curved monitors. They are great. Also man muss einfach, man muss es einfach sagen, auch wenn es doof ist, ein Bezel Free Kit ist schon schön. Ist schon eine schöne Sache. The overall value and offer up to 165 frames per second with a one millisecond latency, which is plenty for racing. I've mounted these using a freestanding triple monitor stand from Advanced Sim Racing to match the infinite black finish of the ASR Pro chassis. I also opted to upgrade the Visa mounts to their advanced micro adjustment mounts. These make getting the monitors perfectly aligned a much easier task. Oh, that's good. I highly recommend these to anyone who has struggled with aligning their displays. Das ist richtig gut. Also, falls ihr irgendwann mal upgraden solltet, glaubt mir, so ein Kit ist echt ein Banger. Weil das kann schon echt besch bescheiden sein, seinen Monitor vernünftig auszurichten. Mein rechter hängt immer noch zu hoch. And then for a more seamless tiefer. view out of the windshield, I've installed the Asus ROG Bezel Free Kit, which is intended for 27-inch monitors, but using adapters from SimSports Gadget makes the kit work with my 32-inch screens. I encourage you to check them out for all your sim racing accessory needs using our affiliate link below and you'll receive 5% off. We will receive a small commission in return that helps support my channel. Okay. For accessories, I have several enhancements and peripherals attached to my rig. For starters is my trusty Fanatic H-Pattern and Sequential Shifter. This is still one of the best packages on the market in my opinion. It features a solid build... Sei nicht traurig. Er hat dich noch nicht ausprobiert. Moser, ist okay. Er hat dich noch nicht ausprobiert, okay? Hat er nicht. Er nicht traurig. Build quality, excellent shifting feel, adjustable tension and a switch on the side to change modes within seconds. I don't think this has been beaten yet as the best bang for buck shifter in the industry. To the left of my wheel, I have a button box from Ignition Controls. It features six rotary knobs, 10 LED backlit buttons, three toggle switches, a large funky switch for navigation, and a gorgeous illuminated engine start button. That's this cool. box is built like a tank with an all metal enclosure. It feels very high end and looks right at home with the rest of my setup. To the right of my wheel, I'm testing the new Stream Deck Plus. Even though this has fewer buttons than the more popular 15 key or 32 key models, it instead has four rotary knobs that are great for either controlling lighting or audio mixing different outputs and inputs from my PC, like Crew Chief, music, my microphone, and even balancing in-game audio. I can also quickly mute any channel by pressing on the knobs. 
Above that is a small OLED display screen showing the volume levels. Finally, I have eight illuminated buttons to customize in any way I want to either control in-car, control various aspects of my PC, and even help with changing scenes within OBS when recording videos. Da muss ich aber ganz ehrlich zugeben, ich finde das äh, Loop Deck Live Pro Plus finde ich da ein bisschen besser. Also für den Anwendungszweck am Brick. Ne? Also ich habe ja auch einen Stream Deck Plus hier, das ist super und das funktioniert wirklich like a breeze und ich benutze das ja auch äh, hier am, am Streaming Rechner. Aber für, für einen Rick würde ich eher das Loop Deck nehmen. Above my wheel I'm using the Grid DDU5 for displaying dashes and telemetry. The super clear display is housed in an all metal enclosure and is mounted using Simcor's LEV mounting system which allows me to extend the display or adjust the angle and quickly remove it when not in oh, use. Oh, this is cool. I highly recommend using a dash display for sim racing. It allows you to set your in-game camera in any way you need without missing out on helpful information and adds another layer of realism to your setup. It also has LEDs for revs, flags or pit limiter that can be customized in any way I want. For haptics, I'm using the Buckkicker Gamer Pro. It's a more powerful oh. unit than the outgoing Gamer 2 and New Plus models, which is perfect for my heavier ASR Pro rig. This adds another layer of immersion, allowing me to feel changes in the road surface, suspension, and even engine vibration. It truly has become something I cannot live without, and I encourage anyone to pick up a unit for themselves. Das kann ich mir überhaupt nicht vorstellen, wie das ist. Also, Ralf hat auch einen? I don't know. You certainly will not regret it. One of the most essential parts of my setup obviously is the PC build. To maximize performance and graphics in any sim title, I've gone with the powerful Intel i9-13900K processor, which is cooled by NZXT Z73 Kraken AIO with 64GB of G-Skill DDR5 RAM and I use a Zotac Gaming Trinity 4090 GPU in order to maximize my Bin ich eigentlich der einzige Depp, der keine neuen Grafikkarten hat? graphics and frames. Scheinbar All of this is housed in the NZXT H7 Flow case for maximum airflow and cooling with a sleek and a minimal look. To film content for YouTube, I primarily use my iPhone 14 Pro. Still, when I want to sit in the rig and film different content or share my screen, I have a Razer Keo Pro Ultra webcam on top of my monitor that can capture up to 4K at 30 frames per second. I also use a Shure MV7 mic mounted using the Rode PSA 1 Plus. Finally, I move it between my rig and desk setup depending on if I'm recording voiceover or want to record on the fly. I'm a big fan of using both gloves and racing shoes when sim racing. Not only is it <laughs> and keine Schuhe an. <laughs> comfortable, but it also adds some immersion and fun to my racing experience. For gloves, I'm using a pair of the Maradness gloves, which I think are one of the best on the market for sim racing and even allow you the possibility to customize it with your name or flag. The shoes I'm using are the Sparkle K-Poles, which are normally used for karting, excellently obviously for sim racing, and are very comfortable to wear, and allow me to use a hard brake pedal without putting strain on my feet. On the other side of my small den, I have a desk setup where I can do work or edit my YouTube videos. I'm using the Apple M1 Mac Studio, which is powerful enough to handle pretty much anything I throw at it and can edit 4K footage with ease. The display is an LG 4K 32-inch monitor that can swivel left or right or rise up and down. I have another mic mount okay, also for recording zusammen. voiceovers okay. directly into my videos. For audio, I'm using the Edifier Luna speakers. They sound excellent, but I also like the pod-like design and think it suits my setup well. My peripherals include the MX Keys and MX Master Mouse from Logitech. Both are great to use and support up to three devices allowing me to also use my sim racing PC at my desk, which is also connected to the same monitor in case I want to play other games. I have an IKEA lamp with built-in wireless charging and a wall shelf above displaying some of my Porsche model collection. Thanks for watching this tour of my setup and let me know in the comments what you think or if you have any questions about anything you've seen here. Just and I hope it may have inspired or given you ideas for your own setup. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more sim racing content and if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor and hit that like button below. Das Thanks for watching schönes. and until the next one, stay safe and happy racing. Ja auch. Das ist wirklich ein sehr, sehr schönes Setup. Doch. Es ist sehr schön gebaut. Und da sind sehr viele tolle Sachen drin. Doch.
Das spricht mich an. 